All right, there's going to be a standing figure in the sketchbook with a little bit of drapery. I'm going to talk about how that drapery and actually how the long hair uh, of this particular figure flow into a, a little bit better composition. So a few tricks of the trade here. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to do a little sketch here um, on this page. This is my daughter Tessa did the little dragon there, so it's fun to draw next to her. And um, hair is great because uh, as it gets longer, it becomes more directional. And so it draws you, of course, in this case, over the neck, down into the shoulders, very much like the drapery does below. So both of those uh, costuming features, let's call them, um, do a lot of good work. They help tie together things that may feel a little bit uh, broken apart or separated at first glance. Makes it a little easier to visualize the connection. Okay, and she has this beautiful subtle uh, bow to her back there and uh, really wide shoulders which we want to be careful of so it doesn't uh, come off as too masculine. If we do that really wide shoulder and narrow waist it can uh, kind of throw the throw off the character that we're after. So wide shoulders are done carefully for the female. Okay, now the, of course, the drapery is uh, covering the middle part of those legs, and so we can't see exactly what the legs are doing, so we just make our best guess. And since it will be covered, it'll cover whatever mistakes we happen to make on that. So this goes this way. I'm going to say the knee's about here and it swings back this way down to the ground and this pulls down this way comes down a little farther and let's say the crook of the knee is about there <clears throat> So when I want to get a figure sitting on the, or standing on the ground, I should say, I should say um, I'm going to think of that back of the heel as a boxy idea. One of the many advantages of being able to see organic structures as boxy structures, we get better, uh, stru uh, better structure, better positioning, and what that actually means, um, or also means, is that we get a perspective of part of the body, that boxy part of the body that is in perspective with you know, the vanishing lines for a floor, maybe it's a parquet floor or something. So that gives us, um, gives us a means to set this figure in an environment that's got the traditional linear perspective stuff going on. Very, very helpful when you're making pictures. This comes way up here, comes down, and pulls down in. And I don't care if the shading goes beyond the, the silhouette that I've drawn. In fact, oftentimes I like to do that. I do it on purpose as I've done here because then that will show how the 
figure suggests how the figure relates to the background. It's a dark, dark hair, dark shadow on a dark uh, background. That's that uh, Brown School, Rembrandt and such. They would always have that background dark so that the shadows and the, the back and the uh, background environment would drop away and that lovely light that chiaroscuro form through light and shadow, but mainly the emphasis was almost always on light. The shadow was the foil for the light, in effect. I'm going to make this side less complete than this side. And that's something that uh, you can get away with easily, of course, in a sketch, but that's also something I might well do in the finish painting. Let one side be dramatically or subtly uh, less finished than the principal side. You'll see that in portraiture with eyes. Oftentimes one eye has more detail. It has the highlight or it has more reflected light or it has more information, more nuance of lashes and st structure of socket and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a hierarchy of interest so that they're not competing. But one is the clear clear hero of the story, clear lead. So notice now, as we used with the head to tie into the uh, torso down through the spine or grouping over, say grouping uh, this over, let's bring that out a little bit more, to the shoulder so we're not getting this lollipop kind of stick on a bigger structure that we get off times with head into shoulders so that it takes us across or takes us down through and allows a, a more graceful movement out of head into body. So that long hair does that. And we're getting the same thing, of course, with the drapery down below. Pick that up there. And uh, this up here. And so this drapery is going to take us, we've got that hourglass figure. She's got this lovely hourglass narrow waist, wide rib cage, and even wider hips, that whole typical female idea. But again, it gets a little lumpy, not as lumpy as the uh, head and shoulders issue, but lumpy. So we can work down through it inside, uh, but there's, uh, and there's ways to do that, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but having that drapery come off the front. She's uh, probably grasping it at the front at her, at uh, her chest, and then it's falling away and around as she, from the gathering. So it's looping through, and so we can use that to soften the blow, soften that blow so we're not going in as dramatically as we do here. We're actually flowing right off the contour, because I'm going to make that do there, and it takes us down, and then Instead of having a post and lintel situation where we've got the block of the head, block of the waist, block of the hip, and then the blocks post and lintel, or I'm sorry, post and lintel, we've got the, uh, the two legs bumped 
two things have happened to tie those together in a more graceful way. One, the legs cross, so then rather than separating out and just two boat posts around a doorway like a Stonehenge kind of situation, which is the structure of the standing human body, we've got them tying together like a uh, like wrapping of a twisting of a towel or wrapping of uh, of the strands of the rope kind of thing. They were tied together and then of course the drapery loops down and falls in, gathers and falls, gathers and falls all the way down to tie those together. So really lovely composition there that's just happened from the the model plane with the props and whatever the direction the photographer or art director gave. <clears throat> now the other thing we can do is we can come in side and draw detail outside. So we can come off the spine and around the ribs. Here's the, the barrel of the rib cage come down the spine. The ribs wrap around like this. So we can track that moving from inside to outside or outside to inside uh, is a really lovely strategy too for tying these things in one into the other and not having the the broken stepping stair step kind of separation but it allows it to group and find a path like water down the stream in a more graceful way. It's not always what you want but oftentimes we have to fight kind of the disconnect of things and find some kind of connecting strategy for our composition as an artist. How do we tie those notes together in the song? How do we tie these shapes together in the drawing? Or the colors together in the painting? Uh, we quite often need a strategy for that. All right. And then uh, if this were to be a, really a rendering of the fabric, the drapery, as you'll see in Renaissance studies where they'll do some of them focus strictly on the drapery. The, the figure is just loosely sketched in. The drapery is what gets all the attention and all the rendering. We'll do a little bit of that there. So let's stop there. That was our full figure sketch with a little bit of drapery with long hair. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you a few ideas on how to tie those pieces together. That's what we're always after as artists is how to bring it all together into a composition. That was a couple ideas towards that end and I hope to see you next time. Thanks so much.